What's up everybody? In today's video we are going to knock out two projects in one. First we're going to declutter my garage. Two, we're going to build some cabinets that are altered for a miter saw station. And as you can see right here, I need it badly. The old tap tap system is not ideal and we need to speed up the process. Tap tap tap. Tap. Oh, is this it? Is this the one? Mm, nope. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, yeah, it's all about efficiency, people. A oh, little bit more. Oh, my goodness! Boom, master. All right, let's get started. So, first thing you see in my clutter here oh, Dutch oven, gotta get rid of that. But over a few years ago, built this, got some junk off the floor, and now it's time to get the junk out of the garage. Quite superior craftsmanship right there. Movie magic. Mm, wedding day. Gotta get rid of these screws. Oh, don't drop it. Now we're gonna measure out for the cabinets that we're gonna build. Get a little tape. Make sure we get it rough to what we want. Uh, before that, I have an idea. I think I need light. Now, I gotta do some amendments here to get it attached to the wall, but I think we're good. Let's test it out. Boom. Bada bing. Now let's do some uh, cutting for the toe kicks that will go on the ground. I like to build them separate of uh, the base of the carcass. And this is the base of the big cabinet that we're putting in. And then the little cabinet to the right. In the middle, we're going to set up the miter saw on a floating shelf. Little tap, little kick, little tap, and perfect. Now here is a laser level that is amazing. Um, I take slides off here so you can actually see the laser a little bit better here. And I like to shim it up to get it level um, before we put our cabinets on there. So that way you get it once and done when it's not as heavy. Now we got the toe kicks all set up. Let's set up the table saw to cut for our panels and the carcass. I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood here. And I'm cutting down the sides all at once so we have the same dimensions when we hook these up and the glue up. Now I like to make a point here. If this is your first project or your first attempt at building cabinets or any project for that matter, and it's your first go, it's not going to be good and it's much easier to do a shop project to eliminate that stress so you can have a go at it and actually truly learn to get the function versus the form. Form will come later on as your skills refine. Here I'm putting in my dado stack so I can make a rabbit cut along the side panel that will then sit flush on the base panel during glue up. Now the dimensions here are half inch by half inch and I'm going to make that dialed in so when I make my cut uh, it will sit flush at the bottom of the panel when it sits down and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. And this is my sacrificial fence to ensure I don't blow up my regular fence. And once you get that installed you'll do a few test cuts. Uh, this will give you an idea of do you have the right dimensions so it will sit flush on your on your side panel or base for that matter. Once you get that dialed in, you get your side panels, make your rips, make it nice and steady. Boom. Here's an example of what it looks like dry fitted using some clamps 
You can see it sit flush on the side and to the bottom and this will prevent any nail holes being shown when you glue them together. Now once you get it all dry fitted and test it and ensure that it fits properly, put some glue on it, use whatever application you use here. I'm using my finger, very accurate. Now this is using Type Bond 3, so it's gonna work somewhat quick. It's about a 10 minute open time before it sets in. So it's important to get all your equipment dialed in uh, so you can drop it in uh, you know, fairly quickly. Deep breath, deep breath, breath. There you go, now you're getting it all squinched up. Yep, that's a word, squinched. Um, move it around the corner here. Moving quick, lightning fast. Got that squeezed in. Last one. And bang. And what you want to do here, I know it's probably not the strongest clamping power, it's just those L brackets. Uh, I like to put some other clamps on the bottom there to ensure that uh, proper uh, pressure is applied across the seam. Just a few more twists. A little clean up. Boom. Now here I am marking for my larger um, cabinet the dados are going to go through the middle uh, because I want to have essentially three sections of drawers and I want to have two dividers to allow the drawer sides to sit on um, and the face frame to attach to. And much like the uh, other measurements of a half inch down, I'm doing the same thing here uh, with a three quarter inch bit to route that out so the panels sit flush and I can execute a similar kind of glue up process um, to ensure they are securely attached. Now I have tape at the end of that so prevent blowout. And you can see here, do a little dry fit. That works out just fine. Putting my glue in. Plop, plop, plop. Squeegee, squeegee, squeegee. Boom. Once you have that all glued in, now you can start to attach your panel. Now this one I'm gonna do a little bit different. Um, I'll have the, the L squares to ensure that we have the right angle. And then I'm gonna put in some clamps. Uh, since I don't have access to put a clamp from the, the side, I'll put some from the top to bottom to ensure that I get a decent um, adhesion to the base. And this is plenty strong once you put your face frame in. There we go. Now what I'm doing here is measuring for the stretchers that I want to put in between each of the panels. Jump shot. And you can just use some scrap wood. I do about four inches. And once you have that all cut to size, you'll put some pocket holes in there so you can install it fairly quickly. And as you can see here, there are gonna be four places you put your stretchers in. Now this does a few things. It gives you rigidity or rigidity. That sounds about right. And once you have those installed, uh, it also adds a second component to uh, the build, which is you can anchor them to the wall and also uh, put your back bracers in for your uh, drawer slides. And nothing like watching me fumble through a process, sadly, not even in real time. So imagine what this would be like if you watched in real time. We're not gonna do that. Get it in, there we go. Now I like to use a clamp to act as a second set of hands to ensure that you can have it more firmly gripped. You can see it move to the outside here. Uh, tighten it a little bit, get it all fitted in nice and snug. Drill, drill, 
Boop. Done. Now, when I measure for my face frames, I like to have a little bit of a gap on the outside of the side walls, so it allows me to have some wiggle room uh, when I'm actually installing a face frame. Now, I'm using here uh, Ambrosia Maple or Soft Maple, um, and I'm going to cut those down into, I believe it's about an inch and a half here, uh, wide by three quarters inch uh, deep. And this will make up the uh, frame components of my face frame. Cut in the links and then cut kind of similar to the stretchers. I'll put in uh, the pocket holes to ensure that we have a good secure adhesion when I am gluing them up. And it's so much easier to sand those first before you get them all installed because there's a lot of nooks and crannies that you got to take care of. Now I'm building three dividers here and I actually like to use wood blocks uh, to ensure I get the kind of same dimensions on both sides. Uh, it's all about creating repeatability and you know measuring multiple times versus just once and using the same blocks. It will help reduce a lot of the errors. So here we can see me using those blocks, using the clamps for a second set of hands to get nice and snug and taking the um, screw gun, oh, screw gun, that's a new name, uh, screwdriver, and putting in the last bits, or bolts, or whatever you want to call it. Now it's time to actually test fit and see what this looks like, see if I actually dialed it in. Seems like I have a passing grade according to me grading it. I like that. And we're gonna glue up, uh, kind of rub it down there, get it all nice and spread out with the old finger glue trick. It's not really a trick. To attach the face frame, I like to actually put it just slightly over the edge so I can have some wiggle room in sanding it down to get it flush. Now, I would only do that if I was going to paint it. I'm not painting it in this project, but I will come back, as you can see right here, with some wood filler to ensure I get a nice, smooth look. This here is um, MDF, three quarter inch with half inch. This is to kind of beef up that countertop and allow me to do a dado for my T-Track, we'll see later on. To keep that secure, I put some temporary screws in to get it all sucked in tightly. Maybe that's right. And now that I got those built and trying, I'm gonna install these cabinets to the wall. I'll be using Capcon screws, which allow to go into the concrete. And below here, I'm using just cabinet screws with a flat head. If you remember earlier, we installed those stretchers at the top and bottom. Now we're gonna measure for a back bracer that allows us to install the drawer slides. You can use scrap, so it's always good to keep a pile back there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm marking exactly where those bracers will go so it sits nice and level and flush so you won't get any binding when you move that drawer. Yeah, I'm going to put that flush to the back and the side and that should be, in theory, aligned perfectly to your face frame. And to further improve your drawer uh, flushness, flushtivity ness I use a 1 8 uh, setback to ensure that it'll be pulled tightly to the face frame. Here we are cutting our half inch plywood uh, panels that will hook up to make our drawer components that will fit into our cabinets. 
And here you want to ensure you cut them all in one pass so they have the same hive accuracy. Once you get those panels cut up, now we're gonna dial in our table saw to ensure we get repeated cuts because this is gonna be a two-step process to ensure we get our drawer bottom to sit flush into uh, the drawers uh, panels once they're all hooked up. Now you can see here I'm doing a test cut on a piece after I've already done one run on all the boards. And then once I move over just slightly um, on that single blade, to ensure that we get a snug fit. There you go. And once you get that dialed in, you make your second pass on all those drawer sides. Now that we have those all cut up, we are gonna cut our drawer bottoms that are gonna sit flush into those fresh, fresh dado cuts. And jump shot, nope, missed. Now it's on to sanding for a very long, long time. Uh, it's really important to kind of do this first before you get them all glued up. You will thank yourself later. Future you will thank you. Um, it just makes it much easier, kind of like the face frame, to get into all those nooks and crannies before um, you have it all glued up. This is where you want to put in some music and listen to a good bop. Kids are saying these days. Once you get it all sanded, uh, you get your four panels. Um, and it's really good to actually do a dry fit before you get into this process, just to make sure um, you have your drawer bob to be the correct dimensions. Because when you do dado cuts, um, some things are kind of inset, some things are um, shifted in terms of your dimensions, if that makes sense. Um, and you want it to be a snug fit, but not so snug that it protrudes out and doesn't sit flush. Um, so you'll do want to do a, an initial kind of dry fit here. Uh, I'm actually I've already done that, but you can see it's, it's a pretty easy process where you kind of hook it up into one bottom, glue a side, nail it in, and then repeat on the other side. Uh, once you get that in, you'll have it all kind of. Um, tight fit it and you can set it aside for drying. Also a good time to wipe it down. Nice and clean. And after like an hour of that, boom. Now while that's drying, I get the um, countertops all kind of flush trim. Oh, look at that. Solid. Um, I want to show your mad skills. Now here I'm actually going to beef up these countertops. The only reason why I've uh, used a flush trim router bit on that uh, so I can get a harder piece of material to create some durability on these uh, countertops because you know a lot of things are going to bump into it and um, this will help protect it. Look at me, so festive and a nerd all at once with Stormtrooper. Any Stormtrooper fans out there? And I am gluing in the last piece here. Um, one of the things I do here is that I try to over uh, size it and kind of dial it in, making small little increments because you are meeting up two different spots uh, to ensure that we get a nice good fit. Now when I'm installing these, I actually have it slightly uh, proud or protruding, I don't know what the right word is, uh, above the MDF and I like to sand it down to get a flush um, uh, level. Now this is the laminate, I'm going to use this uh, to make a cut. And I'm going to do, hey, hey there. Um, I'm going to get up there to have a kind of a more stable uh, stance to ensure I get a nice score to make that pop. Um, and you don't have to like cut all the way through, it's just a few scores. Uh, if you ever cut into like tile or anything like that using like a, a dry cutter, same kind of process. And you'll pop that and then move over to ensure that you've got a nice uh, kind of fit. Now we like to, I say we, it's just me, um, ensure that we have a slightly oversized so I can come back with a uh, another 
cut of the router flush uh, router bit to ensure that it's uh, nice and snug to the edges. And what I'm doing here is using contact submit stuff smells. I don't have a respirator. It's kind of close enough, but um, it's a fairly easy process, uh, kind of nerve wracking. But what you do is you'll rub, rub, how about roll the uh, cement onto the the countertop and also the uh, laminate. Uh, once that dries, it dries pretty quick. Once it's not longer tacky, you can put it on the piece. And I use uh, some sticks here or pieces of scrap wood to ensure that it doesn't touch because once it does, it is there. And I use a little roller um, to kind of work my way out uh, to ensure that it is a good fit across the board. And now that it's kind of uh, strong enough, it actually dries pretty quick. Uh, I take a round over bit here nice little uh, soften the edge cut to ensure that um, I don't get any like flake out over time because it's a, a hard edge. Now you're going to see the first steps that are above and beyond just a cabinet build. So I'm building a floating shelf here to ensure that we have uh, a spot for my uh, miter uh, saw. And now I can call this a miter saw station. And whoop, a little dusty, time to get that dust collection installed. And this is the first time that it's put into its new home. Oh, uh, there we go. And it's now there. Not gonna lie, feels pretty good. But now I'll move on into the installing of the countertops. Now I want to get this level, it's pretty much level with poor, but just get it kind of dialed in with some shims. Is this right? I don't know. It's actually the first time I ever put countertops in, um, but I guess it seems to work. And I get it squared off the wall. Now I'm starting with the smaller uh, countertop and I'm going to work my way to the left countertop. And here, I thought it was kind of a good idea to just use the level again. Some leftover laminate and to ensure that I got a nice flush straight um, line across the board. Didn't trust the wall to be the flat part of the uh, reference point. And then just to check one more time. Yeah, nice. Um, and now I feel pretty confident I can screw this in, wrap up the rest of the countertop install. One more check, yeah, a little bit more just to make sure. And let's put in those drawer boxes. Yep, nice. Anybody notice that the miter saw just magically disappeared? Hmm. And it's back. When I measure for drawer fronts, I like to get the total height and then think about the spacing that I'm trying to create in between. And what I do there is I just subtract the distances of the total panels uh, to get that height. Now I'm using a jig here to help align to the bottom of the face frame to ensure that I have a nice level install across the board. And I like to start from the bottom so when I go to my middle panel I have something I can put a spacer against to ensure that I get a, a proper look that I'm trying to achieve. basically like Formula One speed right here. Boom. Now what I've been really excited to do is put in a T-track so I can have a stop block at the end of it um, to ensure that I have repeatable cuts. That's something I didn't have before in my previous I wouldn't call miter saw station. It's just a cheap 2x4 platform that I created. Uh, but I'm super excited to route this in. Uh, I'm using a Three quarter inch uh, router bit, uh, obviously not a long enough extension cord. Similar process where I put the tape to ensure that I don't have blowout. Um, kind of nerve wracking after you put all that time into a countertop, but actually it was really easy. Now just tap, tap, tap that in. Boom. 
And it is snug as a bug in a rug. Yeah, that's right. And then here I'm just using the fence guide pew, pew, on the miter saw to ensure that I have a nice um, right angle to the T-track. And another cool jig here um, helps install drawer front hardware, makes it very simple to have repeatable uh, aligned um, installations, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. And yep, it works. And last one, last but not least, um, another drawer front. Boom. Yep, nice. Here we are. This is the cherry on the top, the creme de la creme, the icing on the cake. I am putting on the adhesive so I can get repeatable cuts. I am super excited for this feature. Well, folks, that's a wrap on this miter station and cabinet build. Appreciate y'all for staying this long through the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button below. Uh, if you really liked it, I uh, want to follow along for future woodworking videos. Please hit subscribe. And then one extra bonus feature. I have a link pinned down in the comments that takes you to my website that shows a more detailed build of all this if you're interested. Again, thanks for watching. Beep. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow.